In this video, I'm going to compare two similar characterization techniques. Both techniques use for the same purpose. But why we have two different characterization techniques used for the same purpose? The one is XPS, the another is EDX. XPX, we know X-rays, photoelectron spectroscopy. While EDX means energy dispersive X-ray spectroscopy. Both are analytical techniques, both are used to analyze elemental compositions or chemical characterizations and composition of a sample but there are differences before going into detail uh, uh, let's briefly were you what is basically xps here we know xps basically look at the world x-ray photoelectron spectroscopy as i explained here we will use x-ray and we will generate photoelectrons we will basically detect photoelectrons. And spectroscopy we know when light interacting with any material medium. So that study we, we, we call spectroscopy, right? Here, if you look into this, this is the aluminum uh, uh, structure. And here you can look, these two are the uh, sub and these uh, electrons and these eight are, are the second uh, electrons. And, and if you look into the third shield, there are uh, three electrons. XPS basically give this uh, oxidation stats that why aluminum is uh, a, a three plus. Okay, this is this is just for uh, uh, fake information. Uh, but if you look into the EDX energy dispersed X-ray uh, spectroscopy, basically it's what it basically is, it is going here. Uh, here we uh, basically uh, replace this electron basically, and uh, when we replace this electron, another electron fall down, and we have X-ray here. Let's get. We remove this electron, another electron fall, and we get X-ray. Here we detect X-ray. In the first case, we detect uh, uh, electrons, right? Now let's go into detail. Both techniques are very, very powerful. As I explained, that XPS the source is X-ray. We bombard X-ray on a sample. Very simple. When we bombard X-ray we remove electrons and basically we are detecting those electrons from the samples we are detecting electrons right it's basically we are detecting ejected electron in this characterization techniques while in edx the source is electrons because it is in acm scanning electron microscope inside there we bombard electrons not x-ray here we bombard electrons and we generate x-ray is explained a short phenomena from the sample and those photons those x-ray photons we are detected from that detection of the x-ray photons or from that detection of the ejected electrons we get information about the uh, sample but why two different characterization techniques for the same purpose to know the elemental composition to know the characterizations uh, of a samples and to know the compositions of a sample exists in a material or in a sample. Then why we have two different? Let us make it very simple. To me, XPS is more powerful here than ADX. This is understood. Let me show you how. XPS basically explore near surface region, chemical composition. XPS cannot go into detail, deep. XPS is basically not part of the bulk characterizations. XPS only talk about the surface few layer atomic layers. Oh, wow, very clear now. Few top atomic layer of a sample. For example, if you are talking about the sodium layer, so one sodium layer, atomic layer, second and third. It cannot go into deep. This is uh, why it cannot go. I will also explain this. There is a, uh, a reason that why XPS is only for surface. But if you look into the EDX, EDX is basically gives bulk concentrations of element present in each sample. It only tells that what is the atomic percentage of aluminum and what is the atomic percentage of oxygen or other thing. It gives you the bulk concentrations, right? I will further explain the, uh, the differences in a very easy, easy example just with me. 
If you look into the XPS, basically it, we use for the catalysis, for the corrosion, for adsorption, adhesion. I explained this in my first video. These all phenomena occur at surface. These all phenomena, we are only only interested at surfaces. While EDX would provide little to no information about these things because EDX is talking about the bulk, right? Look here further. XPS basically in XPS the main signal comes from a few layer atomic surface say 2 to 3 nanometer or a few nanometer due to the escape depth of electrons this is called the escape depth of electrons while in edx this depth is around a uh, micrometer this means that in xps x-ray cannot go into a uh, long a uh, distance but while electrons can go into deep depth so electron just is a bulk, this EDX is just a bulk characterization and XPS is just a surface characterization. This is the difference. Let me reiterate this. XPS basically surface characterizations. If you are interested in a few nanometer surface, while EDX is basically uh, the bulk uh, characterization techniques. Let's further massage and there is a very nice example here. I hope everything will be clear here. Right? Before that, uh, let's go here. They see both XPS and EDX provide information about the simple composition as I explained before. Though frequently quite diff distinct information owing to the differences between the surface and the bulk interface composition. This means that as I explained that both correction techniques are the same, provide the same information about the sample compositions that what this uh, material sample is made of. Whether it is a pure titania, whether it is a pure zinc oxide or whether it is a composite, whether it is a hybrid structure, it gives this information. But XPS gives a more powerful approach, meaning that it's uh, dealing with the surfaces while EDX is just a bulk thing. Let's make this, take this example. I just took this from research yet. It's a very nice example. If you take a piece of aluminum foil, this is aluminum foil, right? We took it. Now, if you want to know, to test this aluminum foil, that what are the elements there? So, we must just do EDX information. EDX will give us pure aluminum. Pure aluminum. Why? Because EDX is not going at a sur surface, interest, not interest in the surface. It's talking about the bulk, the bulk. So, maybe there will be a little bit of oxygen from the passivation of the surface. So let's suppose 90% atomic weight will be aluminum and only 1% weight will be the oxygen. I hope it is very, very clear. Now let's come to XPS. If we bombard aluminum foil with XPS. So XPS is just surface characterizations, not going into detail. So it will, it will detect aluminum oxide here, this one. Now look here, this one. And if you look into this aluminum, so aluminium basically, look, look in this, this, this now, this, this total is a whole 100. So aluminium is 40% while oxygen is 60% here. And it further tells us that why aluminium is, it, it tells that aluminium is, the oxidation state is 3 plus. And this I explain here. If you look into this here, uh, this aluminium, so oxidation state is 3 plus. It tells that the first shield 2 electron, the second shield uh, 8 electron, complete arct arctic rule, and the 3 is 2 here. And this is the second 2 shields, but I don't, cannot make like this one. This The, the, the third shield is also sub, 2 sub shields. So, in one sh in, in the shield is 3, and the 3 p1. Look, this beautiful information EDX gives. So, the EDX, the, the XPS, sorry, the XPS gives that the oxidation state of the aluminum is 3. So, it it is 40% exists there and uh, uh, the, the surface 60% uh, is oxygen available. So, so grateful information. Here, the EDX could not provide us. The EDX says 90% is aluminum, only 1% is oxygen. I says, just give the example. But look, the XPS says that the aluminum consists of 40% while oxygen is 60%. So, this technique is more powerful because why it is more powerful? It is because the fact is um, uh, every phenomena is just starting from the surface. 
in EDX keep us vague, keep us in dark that uh, we do not have other things oxygen or something. So, because XVS says that uh, sorry you have a lot of oxygen uh, exists here uh, at the surface you, you see here uh, and this is due to the fact that uh, the aluminum oxide layer and the aluminum is thicker as we explained that uh, XVS only goes to this short uh, depth and when it goes to this short depth so uh, uh, there are uh, so many oxygen exists at the surface this is why XPS detect 60 percent. Now what we will do if we remove this uh, layer top layer with some organ uh, 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 radiations or something then it can uh, uh, give the same aluminum uh, amount just like here. But once you remove the top layer uh, of the aluminum uh, using some lithography techniques or something right. So to summarize uh, both techniques are powerful but EDX just used for bulk and XPS used for surfaces right. XPS deal and talk about the surface few thermic layers while EDX uh, gives the bulk. To me XPS is more and more powerful than EDX.